Hey everyone, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name is Alicia, and today I'm bringing you something super new and exciting. I've been seeing this all over YouTube, and it is 3D sublimation. So if you're new to the sublimation world, what sublimation is, is basically taking a beautifully printed image and transferring it on to a polyester coated blank. So they make tumblers with this coating, they've got polyester t-shirts, lots and lots of different things that you can sublimate on. Now the difference between normal sublimation and 3D sublimation is that the images for the 3D sublimation are gorgeous and that they look three dimensional. So let me show you all exactly what I'm talking about. So this is a 3D printed sublimation tumbler that we use some succulents on. Y'all, how gorgeous is this print? It looks like I could reach out and touch it. Um, these images are brand new to the Makers Gonna Learn sublimation course. If you all are interested in the course, we will have a link below. It's gonna teach you everything you need to know about sublimating. But these are new, these 3D images, they're just so beautiful, we had to have them. And so this is an example of one that we made and we're gonna be working with something similar, um, but different colors today. So you all can kind of see a dark option and a light option and see um, really with a lighter option, you're gonna get more of that 3D effect. So we'll go ahead and get right into the tutorial. So for today's tutorial, I'm gonna be using the PYD sublimation tumbler blanks. These are the 20 ounce tumblers. They're very, very good size. This is my favorite size of tumbler. Um, but depending on which tumblers you purchase, the sizing is gonna be different and things like that. I know that the PYD sublimation blanks are tried and true for us. Um, you're gonna get lots of inconsistencies in sublimation blanks. So make sure if you are looking for a manufacturer and you find one that you love, that you stick with them and repurchase from them because they are not all created equal. PYD is great. I will link this below if you all love this project and you wanna get into sublimating, especially with tumblers, their blanks are amazing. We are also gonna be using the PYD tumbler press. This is so good. Y'all, we have been sublimating with a convection oven forever, and we just recently kind of switched over to using the tumbler press more often. I love it. We probably will never go back. The convection oven does really good. This just kind of takes it up a notch. So love their press. I'll link this below for you all as well. But before we start, we're gonna go ahead and measure our tumbler, and then we'll hop into Canva, which we're gonna be using today to make our design, um, and then we will go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to sit a burnishing tool there to hold my tumbler steady. And then you're gonna need a flexible ruler. I've got one of the Makers Gonna Learn rulers right here. And what you're gonna need to do, remove your lid first. We're gonna be measuring from the top to the bottom. Now we want these measurements to always be super precise, especially when we're sublimating. We don't wanna be off by much at all. So all the way from the top to the bottom, make sure you're as straight as possible. And we're gonna do that at eight inches. And then I'm gonna take this and measure all the way around the top. Now, make sure that you're not grabbing tapered tumblers. They're much more difficult to sublimate on. These straight edge tumblers are really your best bet. So I'm gonna wrap this around, making it as tight as I possibly can. Going all the way to that zero mark. You can see it's right there between, it's right before nine and a half. Let's go into Canva and start our design. So we're gonna be using canva.com. If you're not familiar, they have a free version of Canva, which is great. You can use it to make your sublimation designs. All we're gonna need to do is create a design. We're gonna hit custom size. Make sure to change this to inches. And then we're gonna make our document the exact size of our sublimation tumbler. So we did nine and a half by eight inches. We're gonna create a new design. And then this is where the magic happens. So you're gonna to start to upload your images over here in our uploads. I've already got some in here ready to go. 
If you are a sublimation course member, then you already have access to lots of our sublimation files. These 3D files will be added very soon. And you all can see right here, we've already got a beautiful selection. These are the succulents that I did before. But I think today I'm going to be using this beautiful floral image. This is like a pink and beige, purple and beige floral image. And I'm just popping it in to my layout. I'm going to pull this over until the edge meets the edge. Now the bottom part coming off here is totally fine. You can adjust it up and down depending on what portion of the image you want sublimated. I'm going to actually move it up because there's more flowers if I do it this way. And then that is basically all it takes to add in your image. Now I am going to title this just so I don't lose it in my downloads. I'm going to title this Floral 3D Sub Tumblr. Okay. And then we'll go Share, Download. And I'm just downloading this as a PNG. And then we'll select Download again. So once it's downloaded onto your computer, it's going to go into a folder. If you don't see it right here, you can always go to your finder or go to your downloads and find it there, depending on what type of computer you're using. I'm just going to open this up and we're going to go file prints. Now I'm using an Epson sure color today. This is a printer made for sublimation. I love this printer so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the size of my paper. So we're just going to be using the US letter. I am going to go to print settings and right here you can see it's automatically going to mirror my image for me. Now if, if you're not using a sublimation focused printer, you're going to need to mirror your image yourself. You can do that before you actually go to save your project. So you could just select your image right here in Canva and flip it horizontally and then save it and print it. Um, but I knew that my printer would automatically be doing this for me. So I just went ahead and left it as is. And then you can see right here, I've got that mirror image option. So it's not going to be as important when you're using patterns, but if you have words in your design, it's going to be really important that you mirror. Otherwise, when you sublimate, it's going to be backwards. So I've got my print settings exactly how I want them. Now go to color matching if you're using an Epson Sure Color and make sure to hit color sync. If you don't, a lot of times your colors are gonna be a little bit darker than you prefer. So I'm just gonna always select this color sync and it's gonna match my colors perfectly. And now all we're gonna need to do is select print and it will print our image out. Today I'm gonna to be using the A-Sub sublimation paper. This is the eight and a half by 11. We love a sub paper around here, especially for tumblers. And we're just going to go ahead and slide some of this into our printer. Make sure you've got the a sub looking at you. So it's facing up. Just going to slide that right into the tray. And then back on the share screen, we're going to go ahead and select print. Good. Okay, so here's our image, y'all. This is gorgeous. I am obsessed. I love the colors. I love everything. What we're going to need to do next is trim all of the white edges around our image. Now you can use a paper trimmer for this, but I personally prefer to use scissors. I can just get a better handle on it. Sometimes the paper cutter jacks up my edges and I just don't like that. If you're more comfortable using a paper trimmer, go for it but I'm just gonna take my scissors and very carefully go all the way around our edges. Be careful whenever you're touching your image not to scratch it or anything, it will scratch the ink off. So you just wanna be super careful. So now that our image is cut out, what we're going to need to do next is lint roll our cup. So this might sound and seem a little bit crazy if you're, especially if you're new to sublimation, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to actually stick my hand inside of here. We're going to lint roll that way. There's no residue or like leftover plastic. Y'all, you would be surprised at the things that you don't see on your sublimation blanks. We love to lint roll everything before we go in to heat press it. Otherwise, it'll leave like random marks 
sometimes they're like little blue marks all over your blank and we just do not want that we want this to look flawless and then the next thing I'm going to do is line this up and I just want to make sure that everything is the right size before we go to tape our image to our cup. It's looking like pretty good on the height area. And then we're just going to wrap it. Okay. And there's a little tiny bit of an overhang. I'm just going to trim that up just a little bit, just barely. And then we will get it all taped. So I like to line this top edge of my design up with the top edge of my cup. Make sure if you are using something where the direction matters that you've got your design placed towards the top side of the cup and not to the bottom or vice versa. We don't want our design to be upside down or backwards. And then I've just got some heat resistant tape here. This is made for sublimation. I'm just going to tack on the start of this, that way it kind of stays in place. I'm going to do a piece at the top and a piece at the bottom. And then pull it as taut as you can. And then I'm just going to keep this top edge of the cup lined up with the top edge of our paper. Okay. I'm going to put a piece along this seam. And then I like to run my fingernail along the crease of this. You want to make sure that your design is on here really tight. So when you're sublimating, the two important key factors are pressure and heat. And so we really want to make sure that our design is snug on our cup. The heat press is going to help us a lot with this. Um, but I also want to make sure that my tape is securing my design down to the cup really, really well. So I'm going to continue to tape this entire top rim and the bottom rim. The tighter that is, the less ghosting you're going to get. And I'll show you all what ghosting is here in just a minute. Um, but what it looks like is your design kind of fades out and it gives it this just like a weird ghosty look. And so people call it ghosting. Um, so what I'm going to do is just work my way around the entire bottom and top and get everything taped down really well. And then sometimes I'll kind of take it and put a lot of pressure on it to make sure that that tape really adheres down. And I'm going to re repeat the process on the top. So you can see here, I've already got our press preheated to 385. What we're going to do is put in some butcher paper and then slide our tumbler in. I'm going to press it for 60 seconds with the seam up. And then after that 60 seconds is over, I'm going to put my heat gloves on, rotate it 90 degrees and heat it for another 60 seconds. So with this press, there's a little gap at the top. And so you have to rotate it to make sure that the whole thing gets sublimated. Um, but you are going to have to play around with your heat settings and your time settings sometimes. This is just what works for us with this heat press. So even in the convection oven, we're using different heat settings as well as time settings. This one sends a lot more heat a lot quicker. And so we don't have to do it for nearly as long as we would in a convection oven. So 3D5, 60 seconds, rotate it 60 more seconds and then pull it out and it's done. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get some butcher's paper ready. going to slide that in there and kind of hold it open and I like to put the seam up first so I can remember where it's at so we're going to go seam in and then we're going to go ahead and press it 
Now make sure if these knobs are not all the way tight that you tighten it um, all the way. That way it's firmly pressing on the mug. Like I said earlier, you want to make sure that there's lots of pressure as well as heat at the same time. This causes that ink to form into a gas and the gas adheres to the polymers on the coating of the tumbler. So that's how the sublimation process works. And this should be at 60 seconds. Okay, I'm just going to open it and then I'm going to turn it so the seam is at the bottom. We're going to close it again. Okay, and then we're going to carefully remove it. Make sure you have heat gloves on. We're going to let this cool down before we actually remove the paper and all that because these get very hot very quick. So I'm just going to take a weeding tool and start removing some of this tape. It's still a little toasty. You can let it cool all the way down if you want, but I'm impatient and I can't ever wait. So I'm going to go ahead and start peeling this off and I'm just wearing my heat gloves. Okay, first of all, are you all as obsessed as I am? I love this. I love the design, the colors, the fact that it looks three-dimensional. This is just next level sublimation for me. Um, I'm hooked. So, if you all love this, um, you can get these files. They're only in our sublimation course. They do not come in our standard membership, but they're great for the people who want to start putting beautiful images on their own tumblers. Y'all, I just, I can't, I'm, I'm obsessed with this. So pretty. Make sure to look out in the sublimation course for all of these new 3D files. We cannot wait to see what you all create with them. This is just so gorgeous and I love it. If you made it this far, I just wanna let you all know that we are giving you $70 off of our sublimation course today. This is huge. We have put so much time and energy into the sublimation course. We teach you all everything from what printers you need to use, what presses are great, and all of the above. Not only that, but you're gonna be getting over two to 300 files and we're adding more. So these 3D sublimation files will be in there very, very soon. And we would love for you all to be a part of it with us. So make sure to click the link in the description. If you're curious about learning more on sublimation, we have tested and tried out so many different things for the sublimation course, and we would love for you all to try it out for yourselves. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time that we make new crafty videos. And if you like this video, check out this one over here. I think you all love it just as much. See you in the next one. Bye.